basically the earthquake can be summarized in, in the following key points, which is the same types of failures that we saw in the other earthquakes in Turkey and recently last year in China. And he points to some key features, which is concrete, which is this piece of material here, is very weak in tension. Therefore, when the material is not properly reinforced, and if you look at the, 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 the pictures coming from Haiti, what we keep seeing is this 45 degree type of failure. Okay? So this was a, a test that we did here in our uh, university at GW, and it shows, it, it clearly exemplifies that typical 45 degree crack that we see in concrete. And as you can see, if I take my hands, I'm actually having a hard time keeping this together. If I take my hands, now it did good, but if I just move it a little bit, it, cr it crumbles. And this is what we see over and over in Haiti. Well, how, almost, do you, how do you prevent that from happening? Well, basically what we need to do is something that can stitch this together. How do you stitch that together? Well, what we do in here in our school is we try to illustrate to the students the difference in response of a material that is very weak in tension and it needs stitching. So what we teach at our students is proper ways to put reinforcement, we call this reinforcement, so to put reinforcement that can withstand the loads that we are expecting in our structure. So here we can see uh, this one is, has failed. Is a, yeah, we went actually beyond its demand, but it took a uh, load, I would say, about three to four times greater than this one. But it can still uh, take th the load. Well, in, in layman's terms, what you're saying is when, with this one, when it fails, it's just not going to fall down on top of someone and kill them. It's not going to fall down. You're probably going to have uh, a structure that is still uh, staying, and but I want to remind you that this we we loaded this beyond what the structure would see. So even if we were to go to very high earthquake levels, you, you would not see this typically in the in the in the earthquake if it was properly designed. What kind of risk are we at in the Washington area? The earthquake uh, in the Charleston, uh, South Carolina, have a returning period, I believe, 500 years. So the last earthquake was probably 200 years ago. I, I don't recall the dates. And so we are uh, probably not in immediate danger because the fault is probably not going to be mobilized for maybe another 50. We're talking geological terms. So maybe 50 to 100 years. But it could happen tomorrow. Because what happens is the, the fault needs to, needs to move to build the energy. So it needs to build up the energy. And the fault, as you can see, behaves almost the same way as this one here. Now we have the fault generated. Now it's, in, it's mobilized. Now it starts to build energy, right? I'm not strong enough. But you imagine if I build the energy beyond what happens, you have this failure, right? So now it continues to build the energy, so it needs time to build up that energy. You want to pass it? I can, I can speed it up. Right.
machine, what we do is uh, we put a piston. Uh, we here you stop and fill with the specimens, and so that will probably be much more time. With James right on top of the future, and he wants again, you did this to me, is that you can sit.